Hello everybody, I hope everybody's um, safe and uh, healthy. Um, um, this video is about uh, uh, Plato, Plato's Republic Book 4. Um, uh, this is the first part, the second part will be posted later on uh, with a conclusion uh, and discussion of what is going on in this text. So let me remind you where we are at. As you remember, hopefully, uh, Plato has posited that human nature, which he is going to find in the study of the soul, which is basically the mind in modern language, uh, has plurality of function. That uh, although there is one and only one you, you harbor actually a multiplicity. And uh, he, in particular, posits three fundamental functions a rational soul, which is your ability to understand meaning to reason, to think, to uh, grasp concepts, etc. Uh, at the bottom, what he calls the appetitive soul, appetitive means uh, encompassing both emotions and uh, feelings, if you want, and uh, uh, desires, all sorts of desires. But then he posits in between a third dimension, uh, which he calls the spirited soul. Uh, the function of the spirited soul normally is to be the ally of uh, uh, reason and enforce the, the decrease of reason on the appetites, self-control, if you want. Now, that there are three parts, and in particular that the so-called spirited soul is neither reducible to reason nor reducible to appetites, is not obvious. And Glaucon doesn't really understand this. So Glaucon pushes Socrates on this. Uh, to do this, to respond to this challenge and try to argue that there are three parts, Socrates will revert to a story, a true story, by the way, of a gentleman named Leontius. So let's start by looking at the text. And uh, 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 if I can find where it is, actually. Yes. Uh, if you have the text with you, I would really appreciate if you follow up with, uh, with the text. It's at 439E. 439E. Okay, so uh, remember, remind you, those are called the Stephanus Paginations International for classical text. Uh, you go to the numbers in the margin, all right? So it's going to be, if you want, our page 127. And you see in the margin here, you have letters. Uh, D, D5, E. So right in front of E. Socrates is speaking. Uh, this is my cat. Say hi. Uh, and six. Let's assume then that we have distinguished these two kinds of elements in a soul. That is to say, uh, reason and uh, uh, appetites. Now, is the spiritual element the one with which we feel anger, a third kind of thing, or is it the same in nature as one of the others? Glaucon respond as the appetitive element, perhaps. So Glaucon position is basically, I don't see what you said there are three parts. A duality in us of reason and emotions is good enough to explain our psychology and therefore human nature. Uh, what the challenge for Socrates is to show that, no, 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 there is this spirited soul as another element that is irreducible to the, the Luna, please. Sorry, she doesn't like Plato. Um, irreducible to the two others. So here is how it's going to be uh, happen. But, says Socrates, I once heard the story and I believe it. Leontius, the son of Aglion, was going up from the Paris, Paris as the port of Athens. Uh, along the outside of the North Wall, when he saw some corpses with the public executioner nearby. He had an appetitive uh, desire to look at them, but at the same time he was disgusted and turned himself away for a while. He struggled and put his hand over his eyes, but finally, mastered by his appetite, that's an important sentence, mastered by his appetite, okay, his appetites are not stronger than his reason, Over, override his reason. He opened his eyes wide and rushed toward the corpses, saying, quote, Look for yourself, you evil wretches, evil wretches at his eyes. Um, take your fill of the beautiful sight. Glaucon answers, 
I have also heard that story myself. So Cadiz. Yes, surely the story suggests that anger sometimes makes war against the appetite as one finger against another. Yes, it suggests that. All right, so what is going on in this story? Well, a couple of things, first of all, that uh, you need to, uh, to need to know. Uh, Leontius is a real guy. And um, when I read the text for the first time a long time ago, uh, I thought what Plato was talking about was something that is actually quite common. Um, if you drive on a, on a highway and there is an accident and, you know, ambulance in front of you and so on, everybody has to slow down, of course. And when you drive by, if there is a guy on a stretcher being put into the, the ambulance, everybody stares. And you may feel a bit dirty about doing such a thing. You think, okay, that's appropriate. I shouldn't be staring at someone in pain. And, uh, and nonetheless, you do it. That's what I thought was Plato was talking about. Uh, and it turns out, no. And um, if it were there's that, it wouldn't work. The argument wouldn't work. Uh, there is a scholar of classics. His name is uh, Hendrik Lawrence, but that doesn't matter to you. Um, who researched the case of Leontius in various texts and papyri from Greece and uh, for the time period at the time of Plato and uh, find out that actually the guy was known for being a necrophile. Uh, necrophilia is a form of paraphilia. This is attraction to uh, unusual or atypical objects, scenes or situations or people. And the necrophile, as you probably have guessed, is someone who is sexually aroused by corpses. Sorry, I hope I'm not shocking you. Um, but you may have heard about this anyway. So what happens here is that Leontius struggles against himself. He's angry at himself. It's easy to be angry at someone else or at something else or at a situation somewhere. Some of you are probably in the present situation. But I'm talking about a case where the anger, the object of the anger is yourself. You both experience the anger and you are the object of your anger. Now, this is important because here the conflict um, between understanding that one should do something and desire to do it expresses itself in anger. Question is, where does this anger come from? And uh, the only explanation, so I say, is okay, well, the understanding or reason, or rational soul, all it can do is understand. The desires just are what they are. You experience your desires. But here, you, it, it, the reason why the spirit of soul cannot be a desire is that it is angry at desire. So it's not itself a desire. So it's another force, a willpower. Right? He's angry because his own willpower was too weak. He could not resist. Even though his reason told him, don't do this, don't look, move on, uh, his desire overruled his will, so his spirited soul. Therefore, the point is to say, that shows that the human soul, the human psyche, has three parts. Uh, that there is something in us between desires and reason, or rational soul, if you want, same thing, um, that is different. Otherwise, uh, you could not try to control, fail to control your desire if it were itself a desire. Uh, it's something else. So, the, in the case of Leon Tus, his spirit takes aversion to his own desires. Um, he hates spirit, anger, his desires. He, he hates what he is. That makes no sense if it were just a simple duality of desire and reason. Uh, reason cannot be angry. Reason understands or doesn't understand. That's all there is to it. All right, so this is it for today, for this part of the, the text. And um, I am going to uh, prepare a second short video to conclude on Plato.